The SNES years were a golden era for Square's JRPGs. They couldn't miss with the Final Fantasy series. Chrono Trigger became an immediate classic. Even Nintendo trusted them with their most important franchise character so they could make Super Mario RPG. It was a hell of a run by the developers. But despite all of the greatness they managed to pump out time and time again, Secret of Mana may have just been the crown jewel of them all. It may not be the most remembered of the SNES era of Square Enix, but it did garner enough of a following over the years that it got itself a brand new 3D remake this year. Which is weird, because it's kind of unlike any other game that Square was making at the time. It broke the mold, man. It also became a bit of a cult classic. Sure, all the cool kids at school were playing their Final Fantasies, but the really cool kids were digging their teeth in a secret of mana. And, like any good kids, they were getting into fights about on the playground. Keep fighting the good fight, kids who really know what's up. And you know who counts themselves as one of those cool kids? Me, your buddy the completionist. And here's the deal, we're tackling a brand new version of a game that we already love. This week, I'm going to be completing the 3D remake of Secret of Mana. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, a show in which I am re-completing the first 120 episodes from the original Completionist lineup. More on that in the description down below. I want to take you guys back to the year 2011. Mega Man X, the first episode of The Completionist, had just come out, and I needed a follow-up. I needed another episode that would get people excited to watch the show. And on one hand, Mega Man X got hundreds of thousands of views. And then I chose Secret of Mana, or Mana for me, and that got about 3,000 views. And my entire equilibrium as a YouTuber and a person became one. And I realized that sometimes you make a flash in a pan, and others you don't. So in this case, eventually, as the years went on, Secret of Mana became one of my most popular episodes to talk about. And so when I found out that I was going to be doing New Game Plus and they were doing a remake on the PS4 and the PC, I got so excited. And then I saw the trailer and the gameplay. And then I played the game. Let's begin. Yeah. Now, in case you're all wondering, I'm a weird guy and I say mana instead of mana. It's just something that I grew up with my whole life. So if you hear me kind of say it back and forth, just let it slide. It's just what I do. Secret of Mana came out when Japanese RPGs were just starting to get super popular here in the West. Final Fantasy 2, or 4 if you're nasty, had just come out in the States, introducing an entire generation of SNES gamers to what would become the stereotypical JRPG. You know the kind, turn-based battles, super annoying main characters, unnecessarily long stories, hella grinding, you get the idea. But just a year later, Secret of Mana came along to bust up some expectations. Expectations. It did away with the turn-based combat and the super long story. It popularized the action RPG genre. Oh, and Square also added the amazing touch of making it co-op with three people. It did keep the grinding though. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't know anyone who actually played this game with more than one person. And until recently, I finally sat down to complete the game with two of my good friends, Pro Jared and Alex Fasciani. And if you want to check out that playthrough, the first ever three player Let's Play, you can check it out on the RPG Bros channel right here. Secret of Mana's unique take on the RPG genre was an immediate hit with critics, and people were calling it one of the best games ever made. But because it didn't have Final Fantasy in its title, most kids my age weren't interested in it. It just didn't have that name recognition that mattered when you were trying to impress your friend that made that dumb decision to buy a Genesis over a Super Nintendo. Yeah, I said it! Even though I got both at the time, yeah, I thought Super Nintendo was better. But now I don't care, because video games. I didn't know much about the history of JRPGs when I first picked up Secret of Mana though. All I knew is that it had gorgeous pixel art and box art that was literally impossible to ignore. I mean, look at this thing. Have you ever seen box art that beautiful? It's like Monet painted this shit. 
happened. So when I finally saved up my money to play Secret of Mana, I was taken away to a different world. I didn't know what to do with it. Its combat was basically like the Zelda games that I had loved, but it had this massive story, all of these stats, and pieces of equipment that I had to take care of. It had multiple characters running around on your team. It was straight up baffling to me as a kid. But even without any knowledge of RPGs, I knew something was special about this game. The music was incredible and the graphics were unbelievable. It established Square in my mind as that company that would make those super beautiful video games. Plus, that three-player co-op made it super fun to play with friends. And really, is there anything better? Earlier this year, Square Enix went ahead and dropped a fully remade version of Secret of Mana directly into our collective laps. It had brand new 3D graphics, completely redone from that classic pixel art of the original, and, um, it looks new-ish? When I first completed Secret of Mana, I had to level everything up to max rank, kill all of the bosses, and generally just finish the game. But obviously, because it was an SNES game, the original Secret of Mana did not have any achievements. However, this remake does! So, let's take a look at what I'll have to do to really complete this bad- Oh god, I had to get every single piece of armor?! I mean, I guess I could have done it the first time around, but now it's an actual achievement. I definitely leveled every weapon I had to max rank with every character last time I played through this thing, but I couldn't tell you if I managed to find every single last bit of gear. Apparently this time around, I'll have to go ahead and fill out a bestiary by finding and fighting each and every enemy in the game. Oh, I'm sure that'll be fun. Regardless of my impending grindy doom, this is the perfect time to go back to one of my favorite games of all time. It's been a few years since I played Secret of Mana, and a lot has changed since then. I reviewed a lot of long-ass RPGs. I've played more than a few Square games, including several Final Fantasy games worth a damn. I even went through the fan ringer of playing Earthbound. So I'd like to think that I've gotten pretty good at JRPGs in my time as the completionist, but that also means that I've gotten way more critical of them. I first reviewed Secret of Mana more than half a decade ago, so I've learned a lot since then. Let's see if this new version of a classic stands up to a new smarter Gerard. That is, if I can get that stupid song from the Muppets out of my head. Manamana. Do 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 do. Manamana. Do 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 do. Manamana. Do 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 So if I'm gonna be putting in hundreds of hours into a game, it better be goddamn pretty, right? I mean, Square Enix has had about 25 years to make this thing look perfect. They've put out some of the most beautiful games of the last few decades. There's no way they could possibly blow it on one of their most beloved titles, right? Right? Well, they did. They kind of did. A little bit. Okay, look, I might be a little biased due to my beloved memories with the pixel-based original version of Secret of Mana, but I don't know why this 3D remake really even exists. I would have been perfectly happy with an HD version of the pixelated original. Does that make me a cranky old man? Should I start yelling about how we didn't need beautiful skyboxes back in my day because we couldn't even see the sky on the SNES? Damn kids. I was happy to see that the story and characters were largely unchanged changed though. Even though they got makeovers, under all that makeup and newly crafted hair, they're still the same cast you've always known and loved. They just look, uh, you know, modern. The combat is largely the same as well. It's still the action RPG we all know and love, with real-time battles that are only broken up by delays between weapon swings, and magic still works the same way. There's still dozens and dozens of monsters to kill in the top-down, almost Zelda-like zones and dungeons. At the end of the day, it's still Secret of Mana. They didn't completely screw it up. But here's the thing about the remake. It looks like the game probably came out in 2008. Yes, the designs are still fairly iconic, and yes, the three representation of the 2D sprites we've come to know and love over the years are solid. It's just missing some of that magic that made the original game so wonderful. Maybe it's my nostalgia here, but by making the jump over to 3D, something got lost in translation here. And it's not that the new graphics are bad. Well, most of the time. While most of the game looks great, there's just a little too much in the way of placeholder art for me to be fully happy with the product that Square Enix is selling here. I mean, 
Look at the menus and character health bars. They look like someone didn't have time to finish it before pushing it out the door. It's little details like that that take away from the overall feel of perfection that the first game had. It feels unfinished, like it shouldn't even been released yet. It sucks because when it looks good, it looks really good. I can't help but feel that if they spent a little more time getting everything fixed up, it could have been incredible, but they didn't. I mean, Look at the Mushroom Palace and a lot of the dungeons. They look amazing, maybe even better than the original. Then there's the starting area. It's just not good, especially considering this is the first area you see when you're loading things up for the first time. It definitely doesn't help that there's a whole bunch of new loading zones that slow things down significantly, especially in the Mana Fortress, a place that's already super complex and tough to get through. It's incredibly frustrating to see this. And it's not even just the world map. I mean, look at the ring menu system. It doesn't even follow the characters correctly. See, back in the day, the ring system was outright revolutionary. No one had ever seen anything like it, and it worked perfectly for a game that could have had incredibly cumbersome menus. And somehow, they screwed it up in this remake. When you would summon the menu, it would just appear in the middle of the screen for no reason. And the only way you would know you're on a certain character is depending on the color of the cursor. Blue for the main character, green for the sprite, and pink for the girl. There is not enough of an indicator here to tell us what's going on. Again, a little thing, but little things add up to a wave. A wave of little things, like bugs or something. Speaking of bugs, it certainly doesn't help that the game is riddled with game-ending glitches. Now, it was worse when the HD version was first released, but man, it still crashes pretty regularly, even after a ton of patches by the developers. But even with those patches, I crashed more than 30 times over the course of my playthrough, and it got worse and worse the further I got in the game. It sucks because I know this game so well that I probably could have just sped run it if I wasn't constantly getting kicked back to the PS4 menu. It was so bad that they added a auto save system, so whenever you walk into a new room, the game saves so you wouldn't lose any of your progress at all. It's that bad. And that, my friends, is unacceptable. However, thanks to that autosave system, though, you won't have to listen to the extremely mediocre voice acting every time you crash right after a cutscene. How could you? You have no soul. Do you know how worried she's been for your sake? So, you know, there's that. I guess. It's also pretty weird that they gave everyone names that differentiated from the original US release. It's not Undyne anymore, it's Undine. I am Undine, the water elemental. And this is the first time the US has had a version of the game that gave protagonists actual names, not just let the players name them from the get-go. I mean, yes, you could read the manual, but this game actually puts the names in it when you play. I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but at the end of the day, I just named the characters how I named them in the most recent Beard Bros playthrough. It's still the main hero, the sprite, and the woman. Now, when it comes to the music, the music is rough. The remake features an option for a whole new soundtrack full of remix versions of the original songs, and let me tell you, it's not working here, folks. Just as a prime example, take a listen to one of my favorite tracks from the original game. Now here's that same track right here in the remake. So I looked into it and it turned out the composer was actually overseeing many of his friends and other game composers to make the music for the game. So naturally you think it'd be better. But to my understanding, he wanted to make the soundtrack sound a lot more like he would have produced it way back in the day. I don't know if it's me, but I think the original's still better. The original had amazing tracks. Why mess with them at all? Especially if you don't do a great job at remixing them. Thankfully, there's a feature to turn off all of these songs and use the original. I feel bad because some of the songs are okay, but the other half of them are pretty bad. They probably could have gone with OC remix versions of these songs, and they would have fit a better style than the ones they got here for this game. But despite all the garbage surrounding it, the Secret of Mana remake is still Secret of Mana. Buried under all the bullshit is still an incredible 
terrible game we all played back on the SNES. The story is still the same. You still play as a dude who finds a magical sword that was previously used to seal away a bunch of magical demons so they wouldn't destroy the planet. There's an evil empire, insert Star Wars jokes here. The empire is trying to get the eight mana seeds so they can resurrect the great mana fortress and take over the world, and you still have to stop them. And yes, the main character still is joined by the sprite and the girl in the adventure, and you can control all three by yourself or bring buddies along to help you along the way. And what better way to play along an RPG than with a bud? No, not the beer, an actual friend. I would rather not do that. And in case you're wondering, yes, the gods are still pissed off about the fact that the humans created the Mana Fortress in the first place, especially because they were the ones that gave you mana originally. Mana is good, don't use it for evil, you jerks. You know, if you want to use it in a song, like the one that's been stuck in my head for the past three months. Manamana. Do 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 do. Manana. Do 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 do. Manana. Do do. Ah, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I'm. People are gonna be mad anyways. I gotta stop. So while the story and the world are pretty much unchanged from the original version of Secret of Mana, there is one massive difference between the two. You can now attack in eight directions rather than just four. That's right, diagonals now exist in the world of Secret of Mana. No longer are you stuck going up, down, left, or right like a stupid rook in chess. Now you can mess up dudes who are up and to your right like a queen. Slay, queen, slay! Other than the new directions that the Secret of Mana scientists have discovered, the combat is largely the same as you remember. One of the biggest problems Problems with Secret of Mana in the original and in the remake is that people don't understand something about the core mechanic of the game. This is not a hack and slash adventure. When you attack, you have to wait for a cooldown moment. And this is something that for some weird reason, a lot of people have a hard time figuring out. And that element of wait time is still present here in the remake. You have to plan your attacks thoughtfully and make sure you don't miss. Square Enix also improved the hitboxes and the usage of all of the weapons in the game. For the first time ever, all of the weapons have a versatile use. The bow and arrow actually does something. The javelin is pretty sick. The axe, the gloves, everything is viable. And unlike the original, as you upgrade them, they look even cooler. And because that combat feels way better now, it becomes much more easier to grind out the levels for your characters and your gear. Now, this is the kind of game where you have to level up each and every weapon and magic ability you have, but the improved controls make the grinding aspect at least a lot more tolerable. You'll still have to stand around and use every weapon and magic ability over and over and over again until you're at that level you need them to be at. And once you're over leveled, you'll be able to wipe out a boss in seconds. But hey, at least they made that time sink in a little bit shorter, huh? Plus, they also added a mini map to the game, which is kind of weird because one, this mini map is a moving JPEG of the game. And two, it's not really necessary because there's not really any enemies on it or layouts of dungeons. It's just this map that moves along with you and you know if you want to turn it off you can but I was still forced to do the same repetitive action over and over again, which is never that much fun in a story-based game. One nice thing about the grinding, though, is running out of MP and having to head back to an inn to recover it all. Now, I know that sounds awful and it saves you a lot of money, but hear me out. Every time you sleep at the inn in the remake, the three protagonists have a little chat. And that chat is one of the best additions they could have made to the game. It was great to learn more and more about the dynamic of these three characters. It's such a genuinely great touch that I can forgive them for making the sleepy time at the end just that much longer. Honestly, it made me care so much more about these characters because they were actually talking to one another. You felt like you were watching this team come together more and more and more. Now, it could just be the fact that I've played Secret of Mana over and over again that I was able to complete it so quickly. I know all the little tricks. I know where each and every enemy is in the bestiary. At the end of the day, Square, you can't make me play your so-so remake any more than I have to. That is, is right up until I tried to get every last bit of equipment in the game. To truly 100% the Secret of Mana remake, you're gonna have to spend an absolutely absurd amount of time farming for items. To get specific pieces of armor, you have to kill certain enemies over and over again to try and get a chest to spawn. Those chests have about a 10% chance to drop, and then you'll have about another 10% chance to get the item you need from that chest. That means for every rare drop in the game, you will 
have a 1% chance to get it off the enemy you need it from for each item. And to make matters worse, some items you can only get from places that aren't even accessible later in the game after you've left them. Oh, did you miss that one bit of gear in the sunken temple? Oh, well, that's too bad. You should have hung out there the whole time and grinded it out until you got it. The same goes for the pure land. Way to go, stupid. Now you have to start the whole game again and give it a shot if you want to complete it. To make matters worse, you've got to collect a ton of weapon orbs to fully upgrade all your gear. Now, normally, this would be a massive slog, but I've got a little tip for you guys that might help out. It might be patched out as of right now, but I don't think so. If you have a second controller hooked up to your PS4 or your PC and make another player leave the room right as you're opening up a chest, you'll get the items in the chest and leave the room at the same time, and you'll be able to go back into the room you just left to open the chest again. That's right, my friends, infinite weapon orbs. Now, you may not use this trick the entire time because you'll just become mega overpowered super early in the game, and hopefully you want a challenge, right? You don't want to be that stereotypical millennial gamer who has everything handed to them on a silver platter, right? That's what I thought. Just save it for when you have to smack down that final boss. That guy is a jerk anyways. Speaking of bosses, the bosses in the remake are still as amazing as the original. Sure, I think they lose a little bit of their wonder when you see them in 3D, but the fights are just as cool as ever. It was a blast revisiting them, especially how freaky they look with modern graphics. Well, modern-ish graphics. You know, now that I've had so much time to think about it and talk about the game a lot more, there's actually one last thing that really drove me crazy. Flammy. Now, we in the States know him as Flamey, but here they call him Flammy. In the original version, Flammy can go anywhere he wants. While it does kind of auto course correct you, you really feel like you have the freedom to fly anywhere you'd like. And while flying around seems fun in this instance, they relegated Flammy to only be able to land at specific points on the map. And that specific point is only indicated by the name that appears on the screen. It's kind of frustrating, to be honest. It doesn't feel as open world as it should be. In the end, I really wanted to love the Secret of Mana remake. I really, really did. It's got so much of what I love from the original game, and it improved a lot more from the original, but it comes up just short enough that I couldn't fall in love with it like the first time I did. It left me feeling empty, like I should have felt more, and that's a bummer. And while a lot of changes were made great for Secret of Mana, there's one little f head that did not change that I was hoping they would. Neko, or as I know him, Nico, the price gouging cat. This little asshat is still just chilling in the world, waiting for unsuspecting adventurers who have run of royal jam or wishes or fairy walnuts to roll up so he can price gouge the ever living shit out of them. No, I will not pay you triple for that jam, you stupid cat. I would rather the game crash over and over again and send back. Oh, actually, you know what? No, no, I'll pay for it. I'm not. I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. I don't want it to crash anymore. I'll pay for it. It's weird to think that I didn't fully enjoy playing Secret of Mana again. My past playthroughs have been absolute joys, and it's odd to think that I felt like this one was a bit of a slog. It definitely doesn't help that, even after getting literally every last bit of gear in the game and finishing everything, I wasn't given much but a revamped version of the final cutscene. But does that really matter after I had already gotten used to the new graphics? I was happy to make another run through one of my favorite RPG stories ever, but I was expecting a bit more from a game that had been remade 20 five years after its original release. And after a few dozen hours of grinding to make sure I maxed everything out in the game, I was expecting a little bit more. I wanted something for all of the pain and boredom I went through to finish up literally everything in the game. And the reason why this is a bit different is because the game paints it in a way where it feels like you're going to get something for actually completing it. During my re-completing playthrough of Secret of Mana, there were 121 enemies collected for the bestiary. 59 pieces of armor collected. Three characters fully leveled up to level 99 with all of their magic and weapons maxed out. 38 trophies collected. Well over 30 times that the game crashed on me. 50 hours of total playtime. And one too many times that Muppets Manamana song got stuck in my head and I thought it was Manana. Yep, that's my nightmare sometimes. 
Look, at the end of the day, guys, it's hard for me to say it, but I don't think I really enjoyed this playthrough of Secret of Mana as much as I wanted to. This isn't the perfect version of the game that I was hoping it would be. If you are desperate for Secret of Mana on your PS4 or PC, I guess you could do worse, but this is far from ideal. Even through all the unacceptable technical issues like the dozens and dozens of game crashes, I still found a lot to like here. But for every improvement there was, there was something awful to balance it out. It all left me feeling pretty neutral, which overall isn't a great way to feel about a new version of an all-time classic. To be completely honest, if you're looking for a true authentic experience, I'd recommend you go find an SNES mini and play the original on that one. There's just not much of a reason for this version of the game to exist, and I think I'm gonna say it, it's gonna sound a little mean, but sometimes you have to let the classics just be classics. <sighs> The Secret of Mana remake for PC, Vita, and PS4 has me divided straight down the middle. It might be the most divisive thing for me so far in 2018. New players will love the gameplay, will love the look and feel of the game. A lot of the quality of life changes they made, things like adding more items to be able to store, things like switching between the music of the original and the remaster, letting you enjoy the classic aspects of it, improving the sword and the game, uh, the, the overall battle gameplay is very impressive and very good. However, when you look at it over here, for us original OG fans who've played the games to death, the voice acting, very hit and miss. The music, remastered, very hit and miss. The game crashes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This game crashes a lot and it drives me crazy. The trophies, a fun welcomed addition, nothing too stressful, but at the end of the day, there is so much going on with the remake that it doesn't know what it wants to be. Who is this game for? Is it made in 2007 for newer Square fans? Because if it is, this game should have come out nine years ago. Today, this game is immediately dated with all of its problems. Whew. So, with that in mind, guys, I give Secret of Mana the remake on PS4, Vita, and PC my completionist rating of play it. Play it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you're new here and you like what you saw, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button. We do new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And hey, if you want to experience the secret of mana from the original form of what it is, we did a first ever elbow pad any percent run over on Super Beard Bros with me, Pro Jared, and Alex Fasciani. You can give a click or tap to that on screen right here. Guys, I've been the completionist, and I'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye.